This video is to be taking a look at how to support the recovery and rehabilitation of clients when working in care. Now, the first thing when you are working with people, you're helping them with their recovery and their healing following some kind of surgery or intervention. Um, there are lots of different ways that you can do this. And obviously to support the individual, you need to be aware of what has made them ill or what has led them to needing rehabilitation. There are lots of different ways of medical intervention that can be provided. For example, medication is a key one, traditionally provided by doctors, but nurses have undertaken additional training can also prescribe medication. Medication is really good for treating a range of different health conditions, and it has a number of pros and cons. So often trained professionals are providing it, they're diagnosing and prescribing the medication. Medication is often tested and therefore is generally excellent at treating conditions, but also generally can be seen as safe. That's not to say, as a downside, there are not side effects. Medication can provide side effects. The more medication you take, the more resilience you build to that medication. Um, it can also lead to addictions. We often see misuse and misdiagnosis with medication, but also misuse of and over-reliance on what we call over-the-counter medication. So medications you can buy without a prescription. And again, some people can become addicted to those. Organ transplants, another way of intervening and helping someone with an issue. This involves removing part of the body or an organ from one individual and placing it or transplanting it into another individual, often to replace a damaged or missing organ. And, and lots of things can be transplanted. So it could be organs, tissues, bone, bone marrow, blood transfusions. There's lots of things that can be transplanted. Now, these can be really good for helping with a damaged or uh, missing organ. The downside is that obviously there may be a lack of suitable donations, but also that there is a working life. For a lot of transplant organs, they have a lifespan. Um, so for heart transplants, it may be five years. Kidneys will last for 10 to 12 years. So again, these transplants are really good, but it means you might have to, depending on how young you are, you may have to have multiple transplants performed. Surgery is also another key intervention point. So again, this can help with physical disorders, physical issues, and it can be used for removing um, tumors or cancerous growth. It might be repairing damaged organs or systems. So it is a physical and quite invasive form of surgery. Now, trained professionals perform their surgery. They can fix an issue. Techniques have improved, which have made surgery safer, quicker, easier but they do come with longer recovery times and need for rehabilitation. Charity groups are also really important, again, when aiding recovery and rehabilitation. These groups will be targeted towards particular individuals, particular groups, depending on their specific need or illness. Support groups can be helpful for dealing with a, uh, an issue and it can provide a, a form of support for individuals. However, a lot of charities rely on donations, in order to provide their service. Radiotherapy, again, another form of treatment for cancer. Um, it can be used in addition to chemotherapy or as an alternative to chemotherapy. It's a very focused, high energy radiation that's blasted at a cluster of cancerous cells. And it's often quite effective at reducing or, rem or sort of removing that cancerous cell. Now, it is very intensive. And it's, um, but it's not as intensive as chemotherapy, but it's also not as efficient. Um, it can also lead to localized tissue burns. Lifestyle change is probably easiest and most common form of way of dealing with a health issue. So you change your patterns of life, your diet, your exercise. It might be your lifestyle, such as smoking, drinking, and almost overlap a little bit of charities. There are support groups that can help you do this. Making a change is often a shit clear way of making health improvements. However, it may cost money and it does require self-motivation. And rehabilitation, as we mentioned before, rehabilitation isn't just about someone dealing with an addiction. If you are recovering from an illness, you are going through rehabilitation. So anyone who's recovering from an illness, an injury or surgery or some form of life change or illness, they have to go for rehabilitation. It's about trying to help them sort of return to normal life, to regain their independence. And this can be performed by lots of different groups like physiotherapists, occupational therapists, counsellors, psychologists. There are lots of equipments 
and pieces of um, training or resources that can be used to help with rehabilitation. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a big list of these on the next slide. So when you are enabling rehabilitation, there are lots of different ways you can do this. So you have the physical equipment that you can provide to an individual, and that might be equipment to improve mobility, or it might be appliances that help with daily living activity. So it might be mobility stuff like walking sticks, stair lifts, or it could be sort of uh, special cutlery, feeding straws, raised toilet seats. So you can provide equipment, physical equipment, to help with the day to day. Technology is also a really big um, support system when you're helping someone to rehabilitate following an issue. So you get a lot of assistive technologies and tools that can help people with a disability. So it might be adaptive keyboards or computer screens. It could be um, wheelchairs that can be uh, accessible to learning spaces or have ability to be connected to laptops. So um, users can use screens and textbooks. Providing personal care is a big part of rehabilitation. So helping people with washing, toileting, feeding does overlap a little bit with the kind of providing equipment for day to day. But if you're in domiciliary care where people come and care for you in a home, it might be adaptations made to your bathroom or your bath, your toilet to help people to perform those daily tasks or be assisted with those daily tasks. If it's an awareness, again, health providers need to be aware of different cultural religious practices so for example when it comes to washing if you come from uh, obviously a muslim or hindu background you may prefer to wash with running water than have a bath um, you may prefer to use bidets rather than toilet paper avoid having haircuts uh, again your diet is also going to be affected by your religion so if you're vegetarian a vegan muslim jewish hindu your diet is going to be affected by that and last but not least again the routine service providers are there to help with routines to help with stuff like employability taking part in leisure activities so the more informed a carer is the more support they can provide and again you may want to take a screenshot of this as just some examples of ways that rehabilitation can be provided how an individual will be helped to rehabilitate so as always thank you for watching this video i hope it's been of some help particularly with revision for exams or assessments as always, can I ask, obviously, please like the video if you found it helpful. Tell your friends and let them know what's happening here. If you can subscribe, that'd be amazing. And thank you for watching. Hope you have a good day and take care.